Profitability Ratios Problem 4. Watermelon Inc. provides the following data. There's a table broken down by 20x9 information and 20x8 information. Cash 20x9 $40,000. Cash 20x8 $25,000. Accounts receivable net 20x9 $99,000. Accounts receivable net 20x8 $62,000. Merchandise inventory 20x9 $79,000. Merchandise inventory 20x8, $50,000. Property plant and equipment net 20x9, $190,000. Property plant and equipment net 20x8, $120,000. Total assets 20x9, $408,000. Total assets 20x8, $257,000. Additional information for the year ending December 31st, 20x9. Net credit sales, $510,000. Cost of goods sold, $150,000. Interest expense, $20,000. Net income $181,000. Calculate the rate of return on total assets for 20x9. We're determining the rate of return on total assets. That is part of analyzing profitability. Profitability analysis evaluates the ability of a company to generate future earnings. This ability depends on the relationship between the company's operating results and the assets the company has available for use in its operations. Thus, the relationship between the income statement and balance sheet is very important to evaluate profitability. Now, there's many different ratios used in profitability analysis. We've got the ratio of net sales to assets, rate earned on total assets, rate earned on stock or equity, rate earned on common stock or equity. Difference there, of course, being preferred stocks in one and preferred stocks not in the other. And then we've got, of course, earnings per share, price to earnings ratio, dividends per share of common stock, and the dividend yield. Now, this one specifically, rate of return on total assets. A return on total assets. Similar thing. The calculation, we're going to take the income plus interest expense. So the income plus interest expense. So specifically net income. That's what we mean by income. So the net income plus interest expense. That's going to be the numerator over the average total assets. The average total assets. So again, Profitability analysis, most of the calculations were taking into account things from the balance sheet and things from the income statement. So the average total assets, the average total assets, and we're focusing on 20x9. Now we have net income, boom, $181,000, $181,000 plus interest expense, boom, we got that, $20,000 right there, moving along, doing it quickly, right? Getting, getting work done. So we've got our numerator, which is going to be 100, I'm sorry, $201,000. I can show that later on in a moment. That's going to be our numerator. Our denominator is going to be the average total assets for 20x9. And if we're looking at one year, we want the 1231 year end, sorry, 1231 20x9 year end number, and then the one, one, the January 1st 20x9 number as well, because everything here is given at the end of the year, December 31st. So this number is 1231x9, and this is 1231x8. So you're saying, uh-oh, where is the January 1st, 20x9? Remember, this rolls over to 11x9, so we can use this number. So we're using these two calculations, these two numbers, $408,000 and $257,000, and we're going to average those two numbers together. So $408,000 plus $257,000. And we divide that by two, and that's going to give us our denominator. When we calculate this, do this calculation, we're going to get 60.45%. 60.45%. That is our rate of return on total assets. And the return on total assets, it measures the profitability of total assets without considering how the assets were financed. So in other words, the rate is not affected by the portion of assets financed by creditors or stockholders. So by adding the interest expense to net income, the effect of whether the assets are financed by creditors, debt, or stockholders' equity is eliminated. Because net income includes any income earned from long-term investments, the average total assets include long-term investments as well as the net operating assets. So that's why this formula is so important, this calculation. So it's 60.45%, and that is how we calculate the rate of return on total assets.